Welcome to a review of the Haven on the Norwegian Prima. I'll share what I loved about the new Haven design, what I didn't like, and whether or not I would book it again. Hey everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie, and today we're talking about the Haven on the Norwegian Prima. The Norwegian Prima was the first ship in Norwegian's new class of ships. The Haven is the special suite section. So booking in the Haven, you get the most luxurious suites on board, as well as access to a lot of exclusive areas. Let me show you around. As you enter the cabin, it's the butler station with the Nespresso machine, your mini bar, as well as your mini fridge. You have a large sofa, table and chairs, and a large television in the living room, and then a huge balcony with two chaise loungers. On your way into the bedroom, you'll find a closet with a set of drawers, as well as your umbrella and lots of hangers. This is your bedroom, so it's a king size bed. There is plugs on both sides of the bed and your own television in this room, as well as a door out to the balcony. Then you have a huge closet with a safe, a large bathroom with two sinks, as well as a stand-up shower. Now note, not all the HB cabins are set up this way. My parents had a cabin on deck 13 right above us, and it was much smaller. So be very careful when choosing your HB cabin. The shower has multiple nozzles, as they can all be used at the same time. And then you have this beautiful aft-facing view. To get to the Haven, you'll head to the private elevator that's only available for Haven guests. This will take you up to deck 16 to the Haven lounge, bar, and sun deck. The lounge is gorgeous. I absolutely love this new bar setup. It's huge, tons of space all around it. It was great in the evening as we were sailing away from the Norwegian fjords. We had the beautiful views absolutely huge improvement. Then there's more lounge areas. So this was great for, we had a number of larger family groups on board so they could kind of take over one of these small areas without disrupting the rest of the guests or disrupting the whole lounge. Out all the way to the after back of the ship, we're gonna find the sun deck. It has its own bar. So there's two bars within the Haven and these wonderful chaise loungers. These are so comfortable. I think these are a big upgrade and we really enjoy them. Lots of umbrellas available if you want shade. And then you have that beautiful aft view with an infinity edge pool, which is so much fun. So you can see they're set up to be in groups of two, leaving plenty of space between them. So it feels a little bit more private and exclusive. And here is that infinity edge pool. It was kept to a decent temperature. We actually swam while we were sailing through Norway, which was fun. On this side, we're going to find the sauna. So this is all included as part of the Haven. This was a lot of fun when we were in cooler temperatures to head into the sauna and then come out and jump into that infinity pool heading around to the other side we're going to find more chaise loungers plenty of seating here i think maybe on a warm weather itinerary you might have a little trouble getting a chair but otherwise i mean it wasn't a problem on our sailing this is the outdoor seating for the restaurant and then there's also the cold room so if, after the sauna if you didn't feel like hopping in the pool they are producing ice there up the stairs, you're going to find the adults only sun deck, though this was not widely enforced, so you may see some kids up there. Uh, there is whirlpools up here. I'm sure if you said something, the crew would help. So, was it worth it? How does it compare to the other havens located on the Breakaway class and Breakaway Plus class ships like the Encore, the Bliss, the Joy, the Getaway? Well, first of all, it is much bigger. It's 143 cabins, and our sailing, it had 400 people in the Haven. Now, as you saw, the Haven is much bigger to accommodate that increase in passengers, but one thing gets lost in that, and that's the VIP service you get on the Breakaway Plus class ship. So for instance, Breakaway Plus, the Haven has its own section in the theater for every show. There's a separate section to the side of the theater where Haven guests can go and have a seat. Now on the Prima, you only get specialized seating on the shows that require reservations. So first you already have to have a reservation, and then you have to meet before the show and go in at least 30 minutes before the show starts to secure your seats because they only hold those seats for around 10 minutes. The other downfall is that the concierge don't really get to know you like they do on the Breakaway Plus class ships. We had a couple disappointing interactions with the concierge and we've had stellar interactions on the Breakaway Plus class ships with the concierges. They were always scheming up special treats or surprises or just really checking in on you and being proactive and making sure everything was okay. Now the Prima Haven has three concierges to help you know, deal with the increase in passengers, but I think a lot of that personal touch is missing. 
In terms of the actual Haven space, it is a huge improvement, 180 degree improvement. The bar area is phenomenal. One thing we frequently complained about on the breakaway class ships is that the bar is teeny tiny. It's hard to get that vibe going where everybody's hanging out, sitting around the bar. The bar has absolutely incredible views. The views on the breakaway plus class ships are, there's no view. You're kind of stuck in this little lounge. There's no windows that face out. Now on the Encore and Bliss, you have the forward facing lounge, but sometimes it was hard to get service out there. So absolutely huge improvement in the bar and lounge area, as well as the pool deck. Having a fully outdoor pool as compared to kind of the indoor outdoor courtyard pool that's on the breakaway class plus ship. The sun deck is really lovely. There's a huge upgrade in furniture. So in that regard, I say this is a huge improvement. The physical spaces. The restaurant was about the same. The experience was about the same. The menu is the same. It has much better outdoor seating than the Breakaway Plus ships do. So I really like the outdoor seating on the Prima much better, but the service was just as great as we've had on the Breakaway Plus class ships. One very silly thing we missed was the snacks and coffee and tea station that they have on the Breakaway Plus class ships, particularly on the Bliss and the Encore. Being able to walk out into that observation lounge in the Haven on the Bliss and the Encore and just grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, sometimes they had little M&Ms or a pastry in the morning, was so nice and so easy and gave it more of a concierge lounge feel. Now in the Prima, it's really hard to get a cup of coffee without going to the restaurant. You can ask at the bar, but not all the staff will go and grab you one. So it's kind of a bummer. A lot of people were missing it. We checked in with some folks who had sailed on other Haven itineraries on the Breakaway Plus class ships, and they mentioned it too. They're like, I really miss that little snack station. So hopefully they'll consider that in the future. One game changer for the Norwegian Plurima is the private elevator. All of the cabins are located in the aft or back of the ship. Well, there's no elevator back there. So you would have to walk all the way to the midship elevators, go up and then go all the way back to access the Haven Lounge. So to solve that, they put a set of elevators right where the Haven Suites and the Haven Lounge are. And it makes everything so easy. It really is an incredible way to make the Haven feel exclusive and special and that you don't have to line up at the other elevators. Because I think that's what people are looking for when they book the Haven, right? They're looking for an exclusive, special experience and the elevator really delivers that. Another pro about having all the cabins at the back of the ship is that your butler really gets to know you. We saw our butler all the time. On previous sailings on the Encore and the Bliss, we would book the forward facing penthouse suite and there's only two of those per deck. So we rarely saw our butler, but in this setup, everyone's butlers are in the hallways, whether or not they're visiting another guest. We saw our butler two to three times a day. He was always available asking if there was anything he could do, delivered those nice sweet treats in the afternoon. So that was a huge perk to get that more personalized service from the butler. So maybe that's the trade. Maybe that's the trade is that because the Haven's bigger, you don't get that personalized service from the concierge, but you do get more personalized service from the butler because all of the rooms are more concentrated together. So you see the butler more often. Maybe, maybe that's the trade off. So would I book the Haven on the Prima again? Of course, the Haven's awesome. Having this exclusive ship within a ship, having the large suite, having that beautiful bar area. This was especially wonderful on our Northern Europe sailing. We went to Iceland and Norway, having all those windows. I mean, it was incredible sitting at the bar at 10 o'clock at night and watching the fjords go by. Absolutely incredible. And there's not really another space on the ship you can do that because the observation lounge is much smaller on the Prima than on the Encore and the Bliss. I actually, I'll link to a ship tour of the Prima at the end of this so you can see for yourself. So yeah, I mean, yes, I would book the Haven again. Absolutely. Now, if I had to choose between the Norwegian Prima Haven or the Norwegian Encore Haven, I would pick the Norwegian Encore Haven even though the bar isn't as good, the pool setup isn't in good. And what I would do is add on Vibe Beach Club for that sailing because then you have an adult only space with a great bar, beautiful sun deck and I think that would hit the right mix of kind of what I'm missing 
from the Prima, which is that smaller group of people, that more VIP service from the concierge, and what I loved about the Prima, which was the beautiful sun deck and lounge. So that's what I would do. What do you think? Have you sailed on the Prima in Norwegian before? What did you think? What do you think about my review? Would you pick the Prima over the Encore? Let me know. And if you wanted to see those videos about the Vibe Beach Club or the ship tour, they're right here. And right here is a little video that YouTube thought you might like. All right, bye.